you for coming out and doing it. We're living. We're alive. We're doing it. <laughs> Super excited. This year has been, it's been great. Top to bottom, nothing big going on, right guys? <laughs> I am, I, let me tell you something, I bought a planner for next year, so this next year better shape up. <laughs> January 1, it better be better, period. <laughs> this year's been so crazy, we're missing stuff. Do you know that we're missing, there is big news happening every day that we're just not paying attention to. Did you know in May, in May, the CIA said there are aliens? Absolutely true, the CIA came out and said, there are UFOs, there are aliens. None of us paid attention. <laughs> We're all like, yeah, but did Carol Baskin kill her husband? That's what I care about. That's it, there's aliens, just so you know. That's the big message I'm sending tonight, you guys. Watch out, because they're coming. <laughs> I'm having a good time, I'm glad to be out, I'm glad to be here. I flew here on a plane. I don't know how often you guys fly, if you notice this when you fly, uh, when you get on a plane, you give your ticket to the gate agent, and then when you get on the plane, when the plane is fully boarded, the gate agent will come on the plane and tell the flight attendants how many people they checked in, right? So they get their numbers straight, right? Because the flight attendant counts. That way they make sure nobody like jumped on the tarmac, which is actually what's that, what that's for. So nobody's like, I'm out of here and just runs away. That's true, right? So I go to get on the plane and I go to hand my ticket to the gate agent. First of all, this lady was old. I don't just mean like you're, you're you know, bog standard elderly. She was perilously old. Like it was shocking when I looked at her, I was like, ah, when I saw her. You ever see somebody that old? Like I was like, I want to die before that happens to me. You know what I mean? I'm checking out at 45, I'm done. This lady was 192 years old, it was crazy. She was, it was, I'm not making fun of old people, I love old people, you make it good, that is, I have nothing but respect for you, but this lady, I mean, she should have called it quits. Like I think she died six years ago and just nobody told her. Like she just shows up to work every day like brains. They're like, hi Eunice. So I give her my ticket and I go and I get on the plane, right? And the plane gets boarded. I'm in row one, I'm in the first row. And she comes on the plane and she tells a flight attendant, she goes, there's 211 souls on board. <laughs> what kind of titanic nonsense is this? There was no scarier way to say that. <laughs> She said, fly with the angels, and she left the plane. <laughs> you don't get to say fly with the angels, and you have just doomed us. You have to stay on this plane now. I'm like, you were on the Hindenburg. You know how bad this is. <laughs> scary. I shouldn't make fun of old people. I should. I'm, I'm an old person at heart. I'm a curmudgeon. I really, truly am. I don't like, I yell at people on my lawn. <laughs> That's something I've been doing. <laughs> I just, I don't like technology. Technology moves too fast for me. I just, I don't like it. I have a phone because I have to, you know, because I travel and stuff, but I don't like it. There's one thing I don't like, and I know I'm sitting in front of a bunch of people who probably, there's one thing I don't like, and that is the Apple Watch. <laughs> Thank you, one person with me. Everybody else is like, how dare you, shh. She's not talking about you, shh. I don't have a problem with the watch. I have a problem with the people who wear them. <laughs> no, have you, yeah, have you seen someone with an Apple Watch? Everything is a production. If you ask someone with an Apple Watch what time it is, it's a show. They're like, oh, what time is it? <laughs> right, it's a whole thing. I wear this watch. I wear my watch every day. This is my watch. It is a $16 Casio that I bought from Target eight years ago. I have never updated it. I have never charged it. It will survive nuclear war. It will survive everything, <laughs> right? But I like to treat it like it's an Apple Watch. When somebody asks me what time it is, I'm like, <laughs> Cassie, will you tell me what time it is if I look at you? Perfect. How many steps have I taken today? Nobody cares, thanks a lot. No one cares. You ever see these people who have, oh, I did all my, I did, oh. I was at the grocery store, a stranger, a man I didn't know, his watch was like, -loop, and he was like, oh, oh, I closed my exercise rings. He's looking around at strangers like, somebody approve of me, please. Somebody notice. I do have on my phone, I have a run, an app, you know, where you keep track of all your runs. I'm not running, I'll just make that clear. I felt the doubt in the room. I was like, I have a run tracker. You guys are like, no, you don't. You just admit it, you don't. I keep track of my slow walks, my strolls. 
I go walking in the park by my house. I drove over there and I walk and I forgot to turn the app off when I drove home. And it was like, you beat a new record. Your pace was 35 miles an hour. I was like, I'm the fastest human alive. It's amazing. There is one thing that I don't like, I hate more than the Apple Watch. And that's the AirPods. You see these things, the most ridiculous looking. It looks like you left a Q-tip in your ear and just forgot and just went about your day. You're like, let's do this. It looks ridiculous. I, I don't know, I'm just, I'm, I know I'm wrong, but it's still. This is my favorite thing. This is like my only hobby I have in the whole world though. This is what I like to do in public is if somebody's wearing an eye, AirPod, just when you walk by, just flick it out of their ear. It's pandemonium. They don't even chase you. They're like, these are expensive and they're looking for them. The best time is in winter when there's snow on the ground. Yes. It's like when you lose your car after a blizzard, they're like, I will find them in March. It's amazing. I do have one piece of technology I take with me because I travel. I have a Kindle because I like to read and I travel. Like I'm reading so many books. I read like one book a year. I'm like, it's too heavy. I need a Kindle. <laughs> but I had, my, I had the other day, my Kindle hurt my feelings. Uh, I was reading and I was apparently reading so slowly and asking it to define so many words that the screen popped up and it said, hey, just so you know, we have a reading helper <laughs> for young readers and those learning English. I am a full grown adult who has only ever spoken English. That was a punch to the gut. I was like, I could read my Kindles like, uh uh. I had confirmation too. I went to the grocery store and did you guys know that the word spaghetti has an H in it? Okay. <laughs> You guys all knew that. I get it. I was literally in the pasta aisle and I was like, that's a typo. Oh man, they're all like that. Oh no, my Kindle was right. That hurt. I live in a bad neighborhood. I live in, well, I live in North Hollywood, California. And when I tell people that, I live in North Hollywood, it's a part of Los Angeles, people get excited. They go, oh, Hollywood. I'm like, not that part. There's Hollywood where dreams, where dreams are born, right? Where you go to live your dreams. And there's a hill, and on the other side of that hill is North Hollywood, and that's where I live, and that's where dreams go to die. That's where I live. It's a bad neighborhood. You can tell, I'll take this, this is how you can tell really quickly how, uh, how bad a neighborhood is. And that is by the size of the stray animals. It's true, right? You go to a nice neighbor, do you see some squirrels? You're like, this is wonderful. Then maybe you go to when you see a stray cat, you're like, oh, somebody's cat got out. And then when you see dogs wandering around, you're like, I gotta get out of here. I was in a small town, I saw stray horses. Just mangy horses at the gas pumps and people are like, yeah, get out of here, yeah. I was like, what's happening in this town? Oh, no. I'm not familiar with horses. Here's something, because I don't know, you can tell right now if somebody is rich or somebody grew up rich, if they know two things and that is horseback riding and skiing. Right now, think about it. <laughs> Not if you know one, if you know one, it could have just happened. Some people have to ride horses in the towns they live in, I get it. But if you know both those things, you grew up rich, right? Because rich people love to use other things to get around, <laughs> right? Us poor people got to use our stupid feet. <laughs> right? you go on a mountain, you're like, this is terrible. And rich people are like, it's wonderful. <laughs> I have a friend and she trains people to ride horses. And she told me, she goes, you don't understand. She goes, riding horses is such good exercise. You don't understand. I'm like, what? The horse is the one getting the exercise. You don't get exercise through osmosis. You don't hire a personal trainer. They're like, hop on. You're like, have a good workout. <laughs> Feel the burn. That's not what happens. I have parents I love very much. I have a dad who's amazing. It's incredible. My dad, uh, he's from Ireland. He was born in Ireland, came here when he was a kid. But we have his birth certificate, we were just looking at it. He has a birth certificate and it's from Ireland. It's very Irish. It's like a scroll, it's really long. <laughs> it's like half written in Gaelic. <laughs> a leprechaun handed it to us. I'm like, where was he? And he's like, we just get one when we're born. <laughs> right? It's like half written in Gaelic and it has like, uh, everything's weighed in like Irish, like he, he was weighed in stones. And then it said he was three and a half potatoes long. <laughs> I was like, how long is that, Dad? And he's like, well, it was early. It was early harvest. So maybe I was like, oh, come on, don't pretend, come on. 
And he was naturalized as a citizen when he was eight years old. He became a US citizen. And they took his measurements then. And this is 100% true. When my dad was, a, he saw his naturalization papers when he was eight years old, he was five foot nine inches tall and 170 pounds. He was a man. That's a third grade man. That's an adult man. And he was eight years old. Like, I'm not really good at subtraction. I kind of understand addition. <laughs> That's the size of the average American man. That's the kind of thing where he joins the soccer team and there's a news story right about how they think that somebody snuck an adult on the kid's soccer team. And that's my dad, look, it's just me, guys. He's big now, he is big. He's six foot five, he's a big dude. He's huge. You can hear him coming a mile away, but he's also a Vietnam vet. And he uses those skills against us when we were growing up. Right, because you can hear him coming a mile away, but one time I was a kid and I was taking the trash cans out to the backyard and I take the trash can out and I turned around and he was right on top of me. And I screamed. And I didn't hear him coming. I never heard him coming. And he goes, I learned that in Nam. And then he just disappeared into the bushes. <laughs> my mom is mad at me right now. She's really mad at me because my mom bought a parrot. She bought a loud tropical bird. Which, first of all, can we all agree that bird people are weird? <laughs> Say, wow, you, thank you guys, thank you. That's the most agreement I've had. I'm like, Apple watches suck. You're like, uh, uh, but we do hate bird people. You're like, this we can get on board with. Every bird person is an old, crazy white lady with long hair, like, and the bird's eating food out of her mouth, and she's like, he loves it. Ugh. It's every bird person, right? They start to look alike. So my mom's decided she wants to be one of these crazy people. So she bought a parrot, and she got mad at me because she thought I was gonna be excited and I was angry. And I was mad at her and here's why. Because parrots live an average of 80 years. Yeah, my mom did not buy herself a parrot now, she bought me a parrot later. And I don't wanna be a crazy bird lady. <laughs> now here's the thing, my mom is 57 years old. All right, she might live to 137, she might live 80 more years, but I don't know about that. <laughs> This woman's like, your mom's gonna die. <laughs> You're like super jazz. Here's the thing, she, she is, and I have to accept that. And here's the thing, she is gonna pass sooner rather than later. And I'll tell you guys this, do you guys know what tab is? Yeah. Yep. Right, the soda pop, right? It's a soda from the 1980s that they stopped marketing because it gives lymphoma to lab rats. <laughs> My mom drinks two 12 packs a day. I am not, she goes to the one grocery store that sells it and she chugs it like it's going out of style. And it did in 1987. <laughs> yeah. My, and I tell her, I go, mom, this is bad for you. And she goes, well, I'm not a lab rat. Oh. Sound logic. You can't argue with that. It's perfect logic. But I have to accept that one day my mom's going to pass. I have to accept that, right? Five years, 10 years, maybe 20 years. And then I'm going to be stuck with this stupid parrot that she raised. So it's gonna have the same emotional problems that I have. <laughs> You're like, are you wildly insecure too? I am. <laughs> do you wanna eat your feelings too? I do. <laughs> All right, come on, Penelope. <laughs> What's gonna happen? I should be worried about my health. I should be more, we should all be worried. I'm not. I sh I'm not because medical technology is so crazy. Right, it's amazing. My grandma, my grandma, she's 86 years old. She lives on her own. She walks five miles a day, every day. Like, it's crazy, right? And 10 years ago, she had her heart valve failed, her heart valve, and they took a heart valve out of a pig and they put it in my grandma. And they sewed her up and she walked out of the hospital like two days later. And that's it, like, it's amazing, right? So that gives me hope, right? Because I did some research and pigs cost $200. Right, so I don't need to stop eating McDonald's. I just need to have $200. <laughs> right, and then I just walk into an emergency room like, hello. I have a problem and I have a solution. <laughs> I'm like, I don't have insurance. We can go have these on the bacon. That's how I'll pay you. It's a lot of bacon. I didn't match the blood type, but I did match the body type. Boom, did it, did it. Stop it, you guys, stop it. Everybody's so nice here. 
I have a husband, so sorry. <laughs> um, <laughs> do, I have a gentleman friend. I love my husband very much. We have a, we've been married 14 years, which is a long time. <laughs> It's a very long time. We've been together a long time, and I love him more than anything. And he likes to make plans for the future, but I don't think we have the same plans, right? We have that. You ever have when the lottery's really high? Like, we'll play the lottery when it's like $300 million, you know? When it's like crazy high, then you start having the fantasies of what you would do, right? But ours don't match up. <laughs> like, he's like, where would we live if we won this money? And I'm like, I don't know where you would live if we won this money. I can now afford to buy Chris Evans. I'm not living with you. <laughs> I'm living with Chris Evans. <laughs> That's what I'm doing. Hey, I had a birthday this year, and uh, I have one almost every year. <laughs> and I, wa I, he didn't know what to get me. He told me. He told me what he was going to get me. He said, I didn't know what to get you. He said, so I was going to surprise you, and I was going to take you to one of those escape rooms. I'm like, that's not a surprise, that's a kidnapping. <laughs> it's like, surprise, you can't get out. They make Lifetime movies about that. Also, I'm terrible at puzzles, and he knows that. I can't handle any sort of, we have a tricky front door, I just leave through the back door or a window. I just never leave through the front door. You can't lock me in a room and be like, good luck, it's not gonna work. This is what would happen. I would be in an escape room, I'd be stuck in there, it'd be six weeks later, right? You guys would come in to do it. I'd have a full beard. I'm like, hi. <laughs> Welcome to the escape room. Good luck. <laughs> Take me with you. I'm just kidding. I know I have to earn it. <laughs> Let me show you around the room a little bit. <laughs> this is corner number one. Don't, don't go over there. That's the pee corner. Just letting you know. <laughs> Here's corner number two. I've peed in that corner. <laughs> Here's corner number three. Just avoid the corners. Avoid the corners. <laughs> He's stuck with me. He's stuck with me. We have a child together. We have a little boy. We have a four-year-old little boy. He's the best little boy in the world. He's amazing. He was a cute baby. He's very lucky. He must have skipped a generation. I was not a cute baby. I know that's shocking because I look like a cute baby right now. So much in the jowls. It's like baby-like. I was, I was not a cute baby. First of all, when I was born, my head was this size. Yeah, my mom had a C-section. They just cut her all the way down the middle and bent her backwards, and I just stuck my big, dumb head out. Hey, world. <laughs> And this is totally true, this is not a joke. I was cross-eyed until I was five years old and I had to wear an eye patch. Yeah, I had a giant head I couldn't hold up on my baby neck and an eye patch. I was like, you proud of me, mom and dad? And they were like, she is gonna be living with us for a very long time. She's gonna be around. My son's amazing. You gotta teach him everything, they don't know anything. You know, he's four, he can't even read. I'm like, oh, get on it, man. And then my Kindle's like, like come on. <laughs> but I had to teach, he, <laughs> this is, my sister's having a baby. My sister is currently with child. And my son got really excited and he said, I can't wait to meet my cousin when he punches his way out of her belly. <laughs> I don't know where he got that idea, nor did I correct him. I was like, yep, that's it. I just can't wait till he's like 40 and he's having a kid and he's like, I can't wait for this little boxer to come out. And he'll be like, you are gonna be very horribly surprised. <laughs> I am overweight, I'm working on it. I'm just saying that on stage. I've been saying it on stage for 10 years. For 10 years, I'm like, I'm working on it, guys. Next time you see me, same thing. You won't notice a difference. I don't know, I don't handle food. Well, I, had, I went to lunch with a friend of mine and we go to lunch. We order our food and we're waiting for it to come. And her boyfriend calls her and they start fighting on the phone. Like she's whisper yelling into the phone, real angry, right? And then the waiter comes and drops the food off and she hangs up the phone and she pushes her food away and she goes, ah, you know how you just get so angry you can't eat? <laughs> <laughs> what are you, a crazy person? <laughs> You're making me angry, I'm going to eat your food. <laughs> And that same, that same lunch, afterwards, we, the waiter came over and asked us if we wanted dinner or, or uh, dessert. And you know how like women play the game, right? Like, I don't know if I want dessert. Can I finish a hot show? We split a dessert. Right? Not me. Uh-uh. I looked the waiter in the eye, and I said, I will have the brownie, this beautiful brownie with ice cream. I was so excited. And I said, I, singular, I made a declarative statement, me. Right? He brings the brownie. He has the audacity to put it in the middle of the table. And he puts a spoon on either side. And she picks up the spoon! 
I snatched that thing like I was in a prison mess hall. I start shoving it in. And I'm like, I ain't nobody's punk. She's like, are you even enjoying it? I'm like, that's not the point. <laughs> I had a wake up call. I did, I had a wake up call. My husband and I order pizza by our house at this pizza place. And uh, we order, what we do, they have a special for two larges, for two one toppings. And so we like different stuff. So what we always do is I get, a, I get a large with sausage, he gets a larger pepperoni, right? And then so we each, on Sunday nights, and we each eat our half, and there'll be the other half in the fridge for the next day. We do it all the time. So one Sunday, we each eat our half, we put our stuff away. And then the next day, he goes to work, and I'm home alone. So for lunch, I got hungry, and I ate my extra half, right? And I was still hungry, so I ate his leftover half. But I didn't want him to know, so I ordered another pizza, and I ate half of that. <laughs> So I ate a pizza and a half to cover up eating half a pizza. And when he got home, he's like, this pizza? I'm like, I've never heard of pizza. And he goes, this is Papa John's. Last night we got Domino's. It's like, oh. I'm lazy, I need to be less lazy. I understand, I need to move more. I just, I don't, I don't like to move. This happened, my husband and I went to an amusement park. And you know how when you leave an amusement park, that's the worst time of day, right? It's the worst part of the whole day. Is when you're leaving, you're hot, you're sweaty, you hate everyone, right? Your car is 6,000 miles away in Giraffe 7. Right? You're like, I gotta walk past Aardvark to get there, right? So we go to leave and we exit the gate and I just stop. And I went, no. I went, I don't wanna walk. I went, you bring the car to me. Right, and my husband, I was like really pouty, and my husband has infinite patience, he's so nice. And he goes, listen, he goes, it's not that far, it's all downhill, and I promise we'll be there before you know it. And I was like, fine, and I start walking, right, I'm all grumpy. And we're like five minutes into our walk, and we walk past on the sidewalk, there's this fat kid crying. Right, for <laughs> I realize you guys are nicer than me. I think that's hilarious. <laughs> right, because a fat kid's never crying for a good reason. They're never like, I wanted more broccoli. It's never something good. So we're walking by and I'm basking in the moment. I'm like, ha ha, I'm really enjoying it, right? And right as we pass, the kid's mom leans down to him and goes, I promise it's not that far. It's all downhill. And we'll be there before you know it. I was like, son of a, no, that's my life. Jesse Campbell here. Thank you so much for watching my Dry Bar special. I really appreciate it. You could have watched anything else, and you chose this. Good job. Good job on you. And good job on me for doing it. You know what I mean? We're a team here. We're doing this together. And now is the time, if you want, you can tip. You can tip. There's buttons. You can choose the amount you want. I also accept other forms of payments. Socks. Everybody needs socks. You can tip me with socks. Or, I don't know, shoes. I like shoes. I like cheap shoes, they cost about $40. But if you wanna tip another amount, that's fine. Just please buy me Converse, that's all I'm saying. Thank you.